So tell us about um, this, one this one here. This was my late aunt's favorite driver. She, she got into, started to watch a lot of NASCAR racing um, about 2016, 17. Um, and that's the time where Martin Shrix was doing really well. A uh, very likable guy. Yep. Um, told her about how I met him and you know hung out with him and stuff. And I was a really, was a good guy. Uh, so she immediately caught a lot of interest to that. So, um, uh, after her passing, I felt like we needed to have a car in her memory. Absolutely. So it's the champ this championship of 2017 winning uh, paint scheme. It's a replica, uh, full wrap. But uh, that's the car that she pulled for the most. So we figured we'd uh, do this paint scheme. Well, and, and if you think back to Martin's win the season, you know, I mean, they're doing it from Colorado, you know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they get some of their cars from Gibbs, but the team is based in Colorado. That's yeah, like unheard of. <laughs> very, very impressive what they, what they did, right? Unfortunately, you know, Barney's, Barney Vassar, you know, the owner of the team is not in the sport anymore, but just unbelievable what they did and, and, and the run he had. Right. And, and in all actuality, me, you know, I mean, personally, this is this is – my opinion <laughs> i don't have a problem with chases i don't have a problem with stages but you know i know martin there i mean if it weren't for a couple of stages and the way the points were he probably could have won another title Absolutely. i would assume i totally know. agree 100 but you know it is what it is and he's st he's still you know running well this year he's still in the chase right. so he's got another shot at he's it got a chance, yeah for sure. he's got another shot at it yep. now what are we on um, here this is another replica uh, 2014 um Xfinity Series Championship paint scheme. Um, this is one that uh, Bob Schacht actually restored recently. It was a pretty beat up Bush car. <laughs> um, it was the proper year and body and everything. So we, at the time, like I, like I said before, that you, to, to find a real Chase Elliott car, a little out of our price range. So we figured. Um, Don't want to sell your body parts, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, quite a big lightning to Chase after his father drove for us and getting to know him really well. He's a and the thing I noticed about all you guys' cars in here is, man, they just just shine under these lights. My goodness gracious. Some of the museums you go to, you know, I mean, not to say that they're, you know, dingy, but, you know, these are just, it's like, you know, you're at a car show or you're at the track when it's, the car is ready to go, you know. I mean, you know, they look their best at the track. And, man, these, these things look like they roll off right now. And, Take a checkered flag. This is these highly impressive. <laughs> and this one's a 1999. This is a, this is a real one, a real car. Wow. From 1999, he raced it in 99 as a Daytona Talladega car. Um, and then it was a uh, show car in the year 2000, uh, which makes it kind of interesting because this is the only. Uh, 98 slash 99 body McDonald's car with the 2000 silver anniversary decal on it. Oh, okay. so it was like I said, they used this car as a show car in 2000. In 2000, and it's actually a 99 Taurus. But it, and it being the only 99 Taurus with this on it um, for wow. that reason. Yeah. <clears throat> eBay purchase, believe it or not. Is that right? Late night eBay purchase. <laughs> Tell me about that. Where did you find that? What state? <laughs> this was in uh, Colorado, actually. Okay. Wow. Um, and then when we went to pick it up, they said, well, where are you going to put the other one? And it's, <laughs> a good, it's a good thing we had a two-car hauler with us. And I said, well, what do you mean? Yeah, right. He says, well, I got a Jerry Nadeau car. You're, that, that's part of the deal. So we got two cars for what I paid, thought paid for the price of one. And you had no idea? I had no idea until we got there. <laughs> well, perfect. You know, these side windows back then. Look at that. I guess I didn't do enough research. There was there was 24 pictures, and I only scrolled till about nine or ten before I had four <laughs> minutes to buy the car oh. late night. And the other 12 pictures with the Jerry Nadeau, 13 first 
<laughs> which I've recently found out some more history on that car, which was a, a it was a, one of the, uh, it was painted up as the Batmobile. Um, the, okay. The, the, the Batmobile car. It was all black with the green numbers. Was that the one the that? Movie, for the Batman movie. Is that the is that the time frame where Elliot and uh, Dan Marino were team owners exactly, together? Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Now we're going to the one that I've been kind of looking forward to seeing. This yeah, Wrangler this is a, car. This is a replica. Well, I'm missing a rear window right now. So trying to find the proper right. fit. Eventually, we're going to restore it. It's um, it's a, it's basically an old stock car. Uh, my brother found this one out somewhere in New York, I think, to where. It had a solid, cool enough paint job on it to where if we what we paid for it, we just kind of had to have it. Knowing it's it's a nice replica outside. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Needs some love and inside, as you can see. <laughs> well, I I thought it was, you know, I actually thought it was one of his cars. It oh, looks yeah. great. So it's a it's a replica. It's a good one though. No, it is a good one. But you you guys, like I say, I've said it before and I'll say it again, on this broadcast that you guys replicas. I mean, they look. I've seen replicas that look pretty sad. Yeah, this one's definitely, you know. a, yeah. Well, and, and under under this red is not blue, so it's the, <laughs> it, is, it is a true replica car. But I thought his, we, some... We know from the start. Some of, weren't some of his interiors at the um, time they red, were, they I were think? red once he went to the good wrench. Okay, you're right. Yeah. Until they made him paint them gray. At one point, I think it was 98 is when they made him paint them no more red. Huh. Yeah, that, them and, and, and Penske also... Were also red cars for you, you say made uh, uh they changed the rule nascar changed the rules that they all had to be a certain color gray i did not and know somewhere that somewhere around 98 99 ish yeah why why do you think that is i mean, I, I know that get more standardized i think i'm not sure when i did bobby bowser's book uh we were talking about the interiors of the car and i went back and looked at some of the interiors of his arca car and they were black i said who in the world would paint the interior black you're roasting in there he said tradition and it hides secrets so maybe Maybe that had something to do with the two of everything's yeah. now everything's white. Right. You know, so maybe that yeah, maybe that had something like to do with like it. Like this Elliott generation car was these are one of the last cars that had the red interior. Like I said, the er Earnhardt and you know P Penske had a red interior for a while. And, um, yeah, I did not know that. This is a replica of another, another beautiful replica. Car. Another beautiful replica. Wow. Very nice. This one was done by some guy in Tennessee. We really don't know who it was, but we got some guy in Wisconsin. It was done years ago from a guy in Tennessee. <laughs> Love letter. Um, <laughs> wow. But yeah, this was a this was a, a replica of the of the car to where at Daytona one year they told Smokey that there was twelve things that they didn't like about his car, and at that time they had the fuel cell up on the table inspecting it. And he says, well, go ahead and make it 13. He drove away, drove back to his shop in Daytona, two and a half miles away, with the fuel cell on the table. Typical Smokey. So, uh, yeah, they said you had to have a certain size fuel cell. They, they, they just didn't specifically say that you couldn't have another one somewhere. Right, right. Right? Looking for the windshield, and I guess, huh? Then had a big fuel line until they said you had to run a small, regular size fuel line. So then he'd pile up about 100 pounds of fuel line <laughs> where you would put lead anyways. You know, so he, he always had a way to work around the rules for sure and i think that's what nascar might be missing now now that they've they've taken you know where you have to buy your parts from them is they're taking away the ingenuity of the mechanics and the teams right. i don't think they understand that that's also what fans enjoy you know you beat the system you know you beat the man i mean it's it's part of the sport and right. uh well, I, Smokey was one of the best yeah, at it that's part of why i enjoy gt1 and ta racing so much honestly is it's pretty open rules i mean you can't really mess with the bodies and stuff but as far as engines they're full blown cup engines as big of brakes as you can put under that wheel it's just it's pretty wide open as far as as far as rules we can get you can, you can mount things in anywhere you want whereas there's no standard of where you put this or where you put that it's very open but still as you saw earlier it's very safe cars so yeah it looks sit, like it know. um I'm on to so another a, legend. A replica <laughs> of, a, of a Dick Trickle car that's very, very rare. Yes. Like I said, it's a, it's a great replica. We even had the guys that used to paint for Dick Trickle um, come out and, re and do the lettering and everything for us, and do the hand painting. Mm. Um, Pretty car. So, yeah, it's... You said car, right? Right. Okay. I've always thought Chevelle race cars were really cool. Yes. Um, at the time, we were looking for a Dick Trickle car. 
and just kind of came across pictures of a 44 Dick Trickle car. I was like, hey, Dad, I mean, this is pretty cool. It's got, like, the number that we run, you know, his old number, um, also the number that we run, obviously, you know, currently in, in Trans Am. But I was like, wow, that'd be kind of re cool to redo. So when we found it, it was kind of an ugly, beat-up color. So it was like a faded orange. And <laughs> uh, the guy ran it in the Upper and Midwest Vintage Series, which you probably saw yesterday at yeah. Milwaukee. Yep. Um, he was moving to Idaho, so I just had it off the car, and the timing worked out. We're like, wow, we can make it look like a, an old, the, the 72 Chevelle that Trickle drove yeah. for this man, Jim McCommons, um, only a few times in, uh, uh, in 1973 a couple times and a few times in 74. There are pictures on the internet of the, the, the yes. original. Yeah. So he has driven. I know there's a debate very whether rare. he drove it, but he has. Yeah, very, very rare, which we kind of like that. It's yeah. Cool. Famous for the 99, obviously. Right. Um, so we thought this was kind of cool, something different. Um, Dick could pretty I, I much drive anything. That, <laughs> I know guys that know Dick very well, and they didn't know, you know, or, or not quite remember that, that he drove this car, because it was only a couple times, honestly, over a couple different years. So. Right, right, right. Yeah. No, pretty car, another pretty car. Just got the bumpers in recently. We haven't got a chance to put them on. Oh, okay. When we had, when we bought it, it just had flat, just kind of dirt, like a panel style stuff. Yeah. We wanted to. We looked at enough pictures to where we wanted to get it back looking the way that it, the way that it was. Absolutely. So, I mean, we we looked at enough of it to where I had them. They they did this perfect. The, the way that the trickles offset and the placement of the number and all <laughs> the colors, they nailed it. And I, I spent some time finding all these old decals which are not easy to find these days. not easy not at um, all so this, this is a little this is a lot of fun we're not quite done yet as you can see bumpers and yeah some windows and clean up the interior a little bit and race fans notice on some of these older cars the number is on the trunk too yeah that was a pretty cool thing that they did randomly different people did that yeah and this is who lettered it these guys who lettered it and like i said yes. hey, these guys are famous in this area for doing a lot of ASA cars, USAC, ARCA, you know, a lot, of, a lot of locals, they did a lot of stuff, you know, they were pretty tight with Kyle Hardy, they're all part of the, okay. uh, the Chicago Brushmasters yes. Club. So, uh, yeah. Well, Kyle will enjoy watching that, and then he'll say, hey, there's my pals. Yeah, he, yeah, he actually <laughs> hooked me up with these guys, Kyle did. I, he was the first guy I called when we talked about doing some hand painting, because he's a... Uh, one of, the, one of the guys that was very good at it, and still is, still is good at it. The outlaw is on the the uh, frame down here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the golf cart, what about that? I my mom's uh, golf cart. She, she, this is back a couple years back. She always wanted a, a 57. So my dad started out, he got a little die cast car. Here you go, for a joke for Christmas one year. <laughs> the next year is like, Then you just your, had here, to have it. Then the next year was, here's your 57. And it was a pretty cool thing, but still pretty funny and then a few years later she got the real car <laughs> and that's and that's really pretty this uh car yeah, this here. is one that uh, uh bob shack also he found this down in north carolina for a very very good price for what it is wow. and it's uh it's not perfect it's a driver you know it's uh, yeah damn near mint though you know that's pretty car and the top is wow yeah it's it's 99 percent perfect it's, like i said it's a driver to where you don't have to trailer it to the car show. You know, you can drive it to the car show. Well, you're not driving it uh, unless you move all this. <laughs> yeah. We got a little speed but, uh, door back here. Oh, I got you. Oh, you tricked me. <laughs> you one-up me. Oh, dang it. This is a pretty car. And when uh, they had the 50th anniversary of this car, uh, at, uh, you know, they are talking a lot about it. And one thing that I had never known until, you know, Obviously, Chevy wasn't talking about this, but the 50... If you think of a, a classic car, you think of a 57 Chevy. Absolutely. The 57 Ford outsold it, believe it or not. Really? I couldn't... I had to I had to double-check that when I heard it. I thought, nah. Wow. That's talking about fact-checking. And then I... Wow. Yeah, I looked it up, and no, I was... That is, that's just, that is hard to believe. Uh, yeah, because you don't think of a 57 Ford as a <laughs> classic... You know, because being from Detroit, we have the Woodward Dream Cruise. Mm. You know? And, I mean, it's 10, you know... It's a few blocks from my house. Oh, wow. So, you know, what do you see? You see a bunch of 57 Chevys. You don't see that many 57 Fords. But, you know, just a little, you know, like they used to say about uh, Cliff Clavin. You know, I got all, all that 
useless you know what in my head <laughs> that's part of it but uh and this driving uniform right here that's of interest to me and we got a few mannequins scattered around the shop is that an actual jeff gordon uniform oh, but it was a crew member uniform okay yeah still neat yeah very still cool. very neat yes that's later in his career i assume because it's the black and the dupont and the pepsi yeah i assume the nicorette yeah, next hell. Gets yeah, the next cell. It was 04 or up. 04 to, I forget, but yeah, 04 was the first year for next cell. I think Nicorette was on car in, what, 05, 06? Something like that, something yeah. Something like that, so. Mm -hmm. oh, very nice, very nice. They should end the debate whether they raced at Soldier Field or not. I don't know how that's a debate. I mean, it's it's painfully obvious. Yeah. They drove at Soldier Field and they did it for years. You know. So. Yeah. Sure. What do we I, got here? This one uh, is uh, the late legendary Gene Felton's last restore. Wow. Uh, Gene Felton restored. His Whoa. Sixth restoration. Wow. And that's the last one that he did. Wow. Now that's a legendary name in restoration. Yeah, wow. it's um and yeah, and there's as yeah, and um IMSA driver and Yep. But yeah, it's a seventy nine Ventura. Um it was actually a barn restore. Um Oh wow. Um, and it's a oh, it's a banjo Matthews chassis. Now this is a restoration of an Earnhardt car or they restored it? To look like an Earnhardt car. It is actually a real one. It's um, okay. Um, here's some you got it. You got it, and Junior didn't. Yeah, here's some of the. <laughs> oh wow. Here's the one that Junior got right next to it. Oh okay. That's the one that Junior recently they they redid a few things. They they cut the sides off. They made it a little more exactly what it was. But okay. This was a uh, this was pictures of it here of what it looked like. They they redid a lot of the body work. Oh wow. But it was in as you can see pretty rough shape. Yeah yeah. It was in a barn in, in Tennessee. They, uh, wow. They did about three years on and off going wow. by the pictures of work to this thing. There's all the suspension oh, wow. parts that are a mess. Yeah. Now, that restoration, please forgive my ignorance. Would you restore the, I guess it would depend on the actual uh, condition, I guess. Would you restore the part? Would you, you know, add something to it? Would you weld something to it? How would you do that? Um, they just basically get it as close to like, like instead of replacing that, they scuffed on and actually Gene said he polished on these on and off for days while he was watching TV. Just <laughs> sat there and polished these up to where they're actually chrome again. Because he wow. knew that underneath this mess was chrome. So Wow. Chrome A-frames. Yeah, they use <laughs> wow. everything. Um, Beautiful car. The only difference is, is that they, they, they didn't do quite, I mean, the, this is a Ventura. And this, yeah. This one's a, a Nova. You can see the quarter window's yep. a little different, but that's that's kind of this this actual paint scheme wasn't on this actual car. It's a little bit different. Um, this one had a number fifteen on it at one time as well. I can't even think of who fifteen was. There's, okay. there's a picture right there. Yeah. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> Did he say why he went with the eight instead of the fifteen? That must have been when he was driving for Bud Moore. Right. Um, I just what he preferred, I guess, just to do something different. Still a pretty what car. Gene wanted to do. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> no, it's it's beautiful. It's and how'd you guys end up coming by it? Uh, he had it <laughs> online for quite some time. Um, really, and it didn't go. Yeah, it, it was That's on odd. there for top dollar for many years. Oh, I see. Over a hundred thousand. Um, oh, and now it, I got as you. As the years went on, it sat. Um, and as honestly as his health got worse, he, uh, he probably took a bath on this one, honestly, because he, he sold it for quite a bit less than they have in it to be honest with you but it was one of those there was one of those things where when we left we felt like we stole it and kind of felt bad you know yeah. in this condition he was in at the time um it was nice to spend some time with him though he showed us his basement it was 
of his man cave of all of his trophies over the years. Wow. Um, very, very respectable man. Very talented. Oh, obviously. Um, yeah, I mean, top to bottom, front to back. That's why we did the mirror. Yeah. I mean, but just to show off, I mean, every little thing is is perfect. I think the only thing that's wrong with this car is the little scratch right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all, picky, which picky. All, which I just noticed recently, and I'll probably touch it up later. Touch it up, yep. <laughs> Did, didn't even see? I didn't even see that until you pointed it out. You, Mr. Perfection, you. <laughs> Yeah, they did a wonderful job on this thing, like everything. And, and banjo chassis are really, really rare to find nowadays. Is that right? Most of them were just cut up or wrecked, you know, like, like the Buick that I, that I ended up wrecking <laughs> the Winchester that year. With. It was, yeah, it was, uh, most of them got front clipped, you know, put Laughlin a clip on it or a Hutch clip on it or a Hopkins clip. You know, they're, they're very, very rare these days. Okay, are you especially a rear steer banjo? I think they eventually started building front steer cars, but this being a rear steer strut banjo car, I think is very cool. Okay, all you fans out there who like to see the exact makeup and paint and whatever, there you go. You saw it. <laughs> this is a '76 Mercury that they did pure later had had built for promotion. It was a full blown street car that they would drive. Or maybe not they would drive it. They would have someone drive it to the track. Okay. They'd have these where we'd be in, you know, they'd have <laughs> wow. those in the glove box. Wow. Whatever, and they'd get to the track and they'd stick this stuff on there so it looks like the race car. Wow. Um, and there, I have pictures of this with Wood Brothers in it too. I could send you some of those if you can put it in there. But it was a full blown street car basically. Um, we bought it from a guy in Wisconsin a few years ago that bought it from Wood Brothers and then kind of gutted it out and turned it into like a vintage race car so where the interiors kind of cannibalized a little bit from what it originally was um the headliner is perfect it's got the door and the, everything's everything's there for us wow. to go ahead and carpet this thing yeah put the proper seats back in it and go ahead and put it back to the way that it was eventually in the inside as the show car as as when they had it as they drove it as a you know bench seats in the front i might have to wow. remove that one roll bar right. <laughs> but uh yeah um, wow. I do remember seeing this the as a kid. To where, yeah, they, they drove it around to all the races and just parked it somewhere. Yeah, I do remember this as a kid going to Michigan Speedway. And, yeah. you know, you look at it and go, yeah, but wait, wait, that's, but yeah, but wait. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, it's at yeah. the time, there wasn't a lot of show cars. Right. So is, all of it is original, except for this quarter panel was repainted. And then this is a decal where everything oh, was okay. painted and like this is that original, you know, gold. Yeah. And then they would paint around it. Yeah. You know? Wow. But yeah, the only thing that's not original is that quarter panel that was, which they didn't tell me that by the way. I can just tell. I figured that out after we bought it. <laughs> but it's still, it's okay. They did actually a pretty decent job. Right. Copying the font of the pure later. Brake lights the rest and everything. Of the cars all painted with the original paint from '76. Yeah, this is yeah, that's paint. Right. There you go. Like you said, right. you can kind of tell. No, like I say, as a kid, I definitely remember this car. And what do we got well, here? This is one of several carts. I actually converted this one to an asphalt car um, to go run on the, the go-kart track. We just haven't had a chance to actually do it in the past couple of years. But <laughs> I, have, I have several of these that I ran over the years um, in Mooresville. So this was one that we converted to go, to go both directions. Kind of, you know, left the wing on, just went equal instead of the offset like it was. <laughs> we just squared up the suspension and made it as equal as we could to go left, and, you know, to go left and right. All the all the other ones are for dirt ovals. But this one looks kind of cool just sitting here. Part so Something to play with too, right? Yeah. <laughs> now um, back to your Red this Bull. This one is Red Bull's last car, or I should say, one of their last cars. Uh, 2011 was their last year in Cup Series. Has it been that long ago? Wow. Yeah. Um, almost all of the Red Bull cars when it was bought out, you know, Michael Walter Motorsports bought out that team when it went under. Okay. And basically all the Red Bull cars, because like I said, I knew guys that worked there because they helped me like I was talking about earlier. Um, basically all the cars were rewrapped to the to the, the Napa colors or to the David Rudiman Aaron's colors or whatever they rewrapped basically the cars 
Um, the owner of Red Bull has a solid blue Red Bull car. Um, there's a museum in Colorado that has a silver Red Bull car. And this is the only other one that I know of in the world that wasn't cut up and, or rewrapped or raced as a Michael Waltrip racing car. Um, and the only reason why is because NASCAR um, it, at Charlotte uh, 2011, during their last season, this car fit the templates better than any car that, that was presented <laughs> to them. And this is when they're doing their new laser-ish system where they're just getting into their lasers and getting really into getting into the bodies to where they're within a sixteenth of an inch per competitor. Um, not all twisted up like they got in the, the Twisted in the Sisters. Late right. right. Um, so NASCAR said that it fit so well that they wanted it. And at the end of the season, they bought the car. Maybe it wasn't the end of the season, but during that season, they took this car from Red Bull and made temp they repolished up on some templates and basically used this as <laughs> as what they needed for, for information. Um, and then it sat at Nitro Motorsports, which happened to be my old neighbor in Mooresville. It sat there for a few years, then it was sold to Ricky Sanders, and then Ricky Sanders put it on racing junk, and <laughs> I ate it up three hours later. <laughs> so was, I get a Red Bull car? Heck yeah. A, yeah, there was another one of them deals where it was, I couldn't believe it. You know? It Too was good to pass up. in his shop, so it was a win-win. Wow. Um, Again, the evolution of the technology. Yeah, exactly. And this one was driven by Brian Vickers. He's the very okay. last one to drive this one. Uh, Almendinger, AJ Almendinger drove it. Um, okay. Scott Speed. But the last one, the one to drive it with this <laughs> camouflage picture weird paint scheme was, was Brian Vickers. Yeah, what was the this story about that? This is a very that? rare. They only ran this paint scheme at Charlotte and one other race in their last season. And well, I, I don't remember the you know, story I, behind I the pictures. I haven't got a full-blown story of what it was and was, why exactly they did this. Um, I noticed that in a lot of the pictures, oh, well, that's right, Casey Kane also drove this car. Okay. Um, Casey Kane's in a lot of the pictures, Brian Vickers is in there, Almondinger. Yeah, there's a lot it's of... a promotional mm, thing that they did, these people. Yeah. They must have, uh, some kind of donation, who knows, it just... Or maybe a thank Send you, Red Bull. Red Bull. Yeah. You <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, they were pretty race cars. They were, you know. I, yeah, yeah, it was weird they this, didn't last that like long. Like I said, this was one of their last ones. I'm not sure if it was the last, but one of their last. And they did, yeah, 390. Chassis 390. So they built, and they built their own everything. So in a three-year period, no, let's see, in a four-year period, Red Bull Racing built 390 race cars. That's unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. So now you can't have a collection with an Earnhardt Senior car without right. an Earnhardt Junior car. Yeah, this, was a, <laughs> this is a replica, um, 2014. Another good looking replica. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice replica. It was, it was a deal where we, we originally got the car, we were thinking about doing some, some road racing with a, with a current-ish chassis. Mm -hmm. um, after we got it, we kind of figured, you know, there's, there's actually better stuff out there for road racing. Um, and we had the guys at the Rusty Wallace Driving Experience, another Rusty Wallace Driving Experience car that they did a full-blown rack for pretty cheap. And just to, we had, yeah, we had basically, like you, like you just pointed out, we, we had to have a Dale Jr. car <laughs> after the senior car we have, so. Probably the most. And this was the easiest and cheapest wrap that they could do because they had already done several of them on their school cars. I was actually going for like the Dew Shine would be a cool paint scheme yeah. mm -hmm. or whatever, because you know, or a regular Mountain Dew because I like Mountain Dew. I just <laughs> can't stand Diet Mountain Dew. <laughs> but for the price, it, I mean, it was half of what a recreation would have been. Right. And, and then it kind of grew on me. It's like you know what, I kind of like the silver and stuff. Yeah. So it's pretty like, car. You know, go ahead and be, be, pull the trigger on it. So. Like I said, you know, another solid replica. That's that's pretty well done, I believe. It's it is. A, and it's, you know, it's a period correct chassis. I'm not, I don't yes. remember if it's actually a Hendrick chassis. And this is like a Nasty chassis, to be honest with you. Or this okay. A, uh, you know what? This was RCR. And okay. then JTG uh, Doherty bought it from RCR. But yeah, there's the numbers. Uh, 
Well, no matter what you do, it'll still turn heads. And you know what? Like, and someday, if we find out, because I, I have, I, 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 t I get as much information as I can with the chassis numbers, and some of the connections, of living in Mooresville for eleven years. Um, I haven't got a report back on this number, but it, you know, for example, if we find out that this was a certain special paint scheme, then we might just have to go ahead and peel the wrap, <laughs> stick it up somewhere right. cool or whatever, <laughs> and go ahead and do it back to. That's, that's if we find, find out. out. Yeah, it might, it might, never know. Right. It could be a special car. But... Now, with Canassi selling out, you better hurry up. <laughs> but, well, he's from Chicago, so he hopefully it wouldn't be too far to, yeah. hard to find. And another this champion's goes, car. Yeah, this is uh, original. Um, wow. Darrell Waltrips during his last season. The Victory Tour. Right. Yeah. Um, wow. We, when we bought it, we went to Travis Carter's to get a cutoff body for one of our ARCA cars. Mm -hmm. And they had this one sitting in the corner, and at the time, Todd Bodine took over after after um, <clears throat> Daryl. Um, Daryl was a huge Hopkins chassis fan. All of his cars were Hopkins. This is a Hopkins. Um, uh, Todd Bodine was a huge Laughlin guy. He just he worked with Laughlin very well, and that's just the deal. So they were basically converting over some of their cars to Laughlin. Um, and this was the last Hopkins car that they just didn't want to, they didn't really want to convert it. They just felt like they needed to sell it. So I called my dad and said, hey, they happen to have a car here that they're offering for pretty damn cheap. So, you know, basically we left there with a cutoff body and... Um, <laughs> and a roller. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was uh, everything except for a drive line and shocks and a seat, basically. Um, at the time it was baby blue, it was the blue light special. Okay. Um, we immediately painted it and we ran this in Arca a lot. I had a lot of actually pretty good runs in this car. Um, okay. Finished third twice with it actually. So then you actually ra did race this yeah, car then? This okay. Through. A lot of the body panels under here aren't original. Um, it's kind of updated oh, 03 tail on it, for example. Um, we started getting away with pretty flat curved sides to where they, you know, I, had, you know, I had really good help down there. Uh, my friend Greg Morgan was really good in the bodies. We put a Greg Morgan special on the side of this thing. Uh, the front been all done. So, I mean, it's, it's taken a lot of abuse. It's been front clipped. <laughs> um, I've blown a tire and stuffed it with this car. It's, it's been through a lot, to be honest with you. Um, in the end, it kind of became where it wasn't a very competitive car. Um, a lot of the high travel stuff started to happen. And, you know, we cut the clip off, raised it up, still drug it, you know, cut it off again, raise it up, still drug it, stuff like that, to where. It became a not very competitive car. Um, it was sitting there in primer, and we were getting ready to move back up here, and we were just like, you know what, let's go ahead and put the paint scheme on this thing that was originally on it. And the, the original intent was to sell it. Uh, just never, <laughs> you know, never really did. Well, um, the, Darryl, good thing you didn't. <laughs> Daryl had interest in it, but he had just bought one. He, uh, Jeff oh. Spanker had the sister car to this. To where, or you know what? I think it was the Speedway version. Or this is a downforce car. Okay. Um, I yeah. thought it was a downforce yeah. car with a slope of the nose. This is the original nose. This is like oh, a, okay. This is an 04 uh, nose with a, the the actual the the real nose that was like 2000. It was a pre, it was a big ugly bezel with a <laughs> quite a bit different. Mm -hmm. but like I said, we've, we've, it's it's gone through a lot bigger fenders since it was original. But like I said, it was sitting there in primer. I figured let's just go ahead and put the original scheme back on it. Right, right. And a lot of good runs with it. And if, you know, if someone walked in and, and, and you know, wanted to buy it, this is probably one of the, I think this might be the only car in the shop that's actually for sale, to be honest <laughs> with you. <laughs> <laughs> but then there goes, you got, I would say, what, you got about 20, 25 cup championships depicted here, and there goes three of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and then this over this here. This is just a body. It's like a fiberglass body. Like a show car, um, yeah. We wanted a Jeff Gordon car, really badly, but they're really, really expensive. I'm sure. Uh, so this is just basically, uh, there's, you know, this is just a steel frame under it. You know, the tires, the hubs are just kind of welded to there. And <laughs> just a fiberglass, right? One, a one-piece fiberglass body. And that's more red than that day glow. Yeah, exactly. I think the more of the show cars did more red than day glow. I... Right, so they didn't fade. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah, it's just, and that's why it's over here in the corner. It's next to the diecast. <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a, lot, it's a giant diecast car. Even though it's plastic. Um, we figured, it, it, you know, it kind of suits being over here by the toys. 
area. You know? One twenty fourth, one once. Right. right? <laughs> you know, and I've seen a lot of show cars like this. You know, they don't depict the inside. Sometimes, you know, they'll drag them in front of a party store, or liquor store, or whatever, right. or a Meyer, or, or, or whatever. Yeah. So. Our intentions when we got it was, oh, I can, you know, put a simulator in there, and that'd be pretty cool, but... Yeah. Yeah, I'll... I'll or simulators, that. I'll yeah. I'll do that in my spare time. Yeah, right. You'll know, put just... your, your eye racing in there, right? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what my thoughts were, honestly. You're just, you know, I have to sit back here forever. So. Better in the office, right? Right. <laughs> well, that, that ends the tour of the one-by-one one scales. <laughs> so, folks, tune back in to see uh, AJ talk about his die-cast collection, and... I finally found someone who's got more than me. So, <laughs> thank you, sir, for your tour of the real ones, and we'll come back with the, well, the real diecast. But <laughs> you can't start them up. So, thanks, AJ.